As Lois prepares dinner, Stewie puts the final touches on his mind control device, only for it to be taken away from him by Lois, who won't allow toys at the table. Later, Peter asks Lois for permission to attend an upcoming stag party. After he promises he won't drink, Lois lets him go. Unfortunately, Peter forgets his promise to Lois and plays such drinking games as drink the beer. He goes to work the next day with a hangover and falls asleep on the job as a safety inspector in a toy factory. Peter misses dangerous objects such as a butcher knife, a surge protector, a gasoline can, razor blades, a porcupine, a toaster with forks inside, and plug-in water. The company receives bad press after releasing unsafe toy products, and Peter is promptly fired by Mr. Weed. At dinner, Peter breaks the news to his children but decides to keep it from Lois. He tries different jobs, such as serial mascot and sneeze guard, but fails miserably. Brian pressures him to tell her the truth, but all he manages to do is to tell Lois how fat she is. Brian insists that Peter must look out for his family's welfare. With the word welfare in his mind, Peter soon applies for government assistance at a welfare office. But a processing error creates a weekly check for $150,000, which is based on a remark former President Ronald Reagan made of a woman called Linda Taylor from Chicago, Illinois, calling her a welfare queen by making assumptions of earning such proportions from government benefits in 1974. Telling Lois he received a big raise, Peter spends his money on many foolish and extravagant things, such as renting the statue of David, treating Meg to cosmetic surgery, and even going so far as to surround his house with a moat to protect them from the Black Knight. Unfortunately, Lois is given the welfare check by the male lady and storms at Peter for lying to her. Peter decides to return the money to the taxpayers by dumping it from a blimp during Super Bowl 33 while Brian accompanies him. After the commotion they cause, they are immediately shot down. Eventually, Lois receives the bad news and goes to court, still angry at Peter for lying to her in the first place. After Peter apologizes for lying to Lois and accepting the money instead of reporting the welfare error, the judge sentences him to 24 months in prison for welfare fraud. Lois, Brian, Chris, and Meg exclaim, oh no, but the Kool-Aid man bursts through the courthouse wall and exclaims, oh yeah. Lois tries to explain he's not that bad and that she loves him and insists that, no matter what, she will always stand by her husband. The judge agrees and sends her to jail with him. Stewie, being a baby must have his parents by his side, regardless of his burning hatred for them, especially Lois. He then whips out his mind control device and forces the judge into letting his father go free and get his job back. Peter states that he has learned his lesson and will never do it again. Instead, he is going to try for such things as a minority scholarship, a sexual harassment suit, and a disability claim. In a cold open, Stewie plays with his Sesame Street telephone. As the phone says to count to three, Stewie uses his laser gun to destroy the phone three times. Annoyed that Peter spends more time watching television than with his own family, Lois suggests he teach Meg how to drive. Peter reluctantly agrees, and unwittingly gives Meg a list of lousy driving tips, including instructing her to rev her engine twice at traffic lights and challenge other drivers to a race, which causes her to eventually fail her driving test. As Peter drives them home from the DMV, he notices that a show he wanted to watch is on television in a nearby house. Distracted by the show, he crashes the car into the main cable television transmitter, breaking out reception for the entire town of Quahog. As Peter and Meg realize this, angry citizens of Quahog approach. In response, Peter promises Meg that if she takes the blame for breaking the cable transmitter, she would get a new convertible when she finally gets her license. Once they arrive home with the transmitter still attached to the car, Lois becomes furious with Peter for placing the blame on his daughter. Meg, of course, is blamed and is about to admit the truth, but then decides to keep quiet, reflecting with an inner voice, a reference to the wonder years, at school. Meanwhile, Stewie, seeing the opportunity of the dish attached to the car, steals the satellite dish in a plan to create a weather control device capable of destroying the world's supply of broccoli, since Lois had forced him to eat the vegetable earlier that day. Suffering withdrawal syndrome from the lack of cable, Peter straps a television-sized cardboard cutout to himself, making it appear as though his entire world is a television program. When Meg cannot deal with the public scorn, she reveals that her father is truly responsible for Quahog's loss of television, causing the town to turn against him. To save Peter from further scorn and verbal attacks, Lois gives a heartfelt speech to the community about how television has kept them all from enjoying one another. Inspired by the speech, Peter drags the family to one outdoor activity after another, which quickly exhausts them. 
Once the family cannot keep up with him, Peter decides to go off with William Shatner, who has appeared on the Griffin family's doorstep after experiencing a flat tire, to a nearby festival. Meanwhile, Stewie's weather machine creates a huge storm. The storm's lightning strike destroys Stewie's weather machine and blows Stewie off the roof and onto the ground. While Meg is practicing driving with Lois, the storm causes her to accidentally hit Shatner and Peter, killing Shatner and hospitalizing Peter. As her father recovers, in a full-body cast, he is forced to watch television, causing him to become addicted once again, much to his family's relief. Lois has booked Cheesy Charlie's for Stewie's upcoming first birthday party and sends Peter, along with Chris, to drop off the deposit check at the restaurant. However, once they arrive, they seek the opportunity to play with all the machines, causing Peter to lose his watch in a claw machine. A little boy wins his watch, which causes Peter to become angry and try to force the watch of the child. Five minutes later, the manager sees this and asks Peter to leave. But once Peter shows the deposit check, he immediately apologizes and exclaims how they are very excited to host Stewie's birthday party. Peter, angered by how he was treated, states that they will not be celebrating Stewie's party there, which causes a crowd of people to circle around the manager shouting for the reservation. Peter, realizing what he has just done, immediately returns home with a poorly crafted lie in an attempt to evade Lois' aggravation, which involves him saying that they are Nazis who torture, kill, and kidnap people. He pretends that he has already planned an extravagant party at home so that Lois does not have to do any work. Meanwhile, Stewie misinterprets the meaning of his birthday and assumes that the same mysterious man in white who delivered him as an infant will be returning to force Stewie back into Lois' womb, from which he escaped just one year ago. Meg cries all the way home to Peter from cheerleading practice and has been having trouble fitting in at school. Later, she discovers a new friend named Jennifer. Meanwhile, Stewie makes it all the way to the airport looking for tickets but then is stopped by a member of staff. The man then gives Stewie some advice, saying that running from your problems never solves anything. Stewie then reflects on this, deciding to finally face the man in white. But before he leaves, he wishes the man luck before freezing him in carbonite. Peter tries desperately, but ultimately unsuccessfully, to put together a party in time for Stewie's birthday. He finally reroutes a circus into the Griffin's backyard, saving the day, that is, until he reveals to Lois that he gave Meg permission to go to a party at her friend's house. Lois, who wanted the whole family together for Stewie's party, is upset with Peter for letting Meg go. What Peter and Lois do not realize is that Meg's party is actually a cult meeting where all the members are about to commit group suicide. Peter goes to retrieve Meg from her party and asks Meg to come as Lois wants her there. Meg just says it is just a birthday party and asks who would remember if she was not there. Peter says that Lois would, as she remembers everything, and that her best memories are of when Meg and her brothers were born. He then has an epiphany, having the entire family at the party is more for Lois than Stewie. Realizing how terrible she has been, Meg agrees to come home, and the cult members agree as well. Peter makes a toast, then looks at his watch before he can drink the poison punch and pulls Meg out before she can drink hers, oblivious to the fact that he is saving her life in the process while the cult members all die. The cult leader chases after them while wearing his ceremonial white robe and is mistaken by Stewie as the man in white. Stewie does away with him and, feeling victorious, joins the others to enjoy his party. Hey Stewie, make a wish!